seven days and march for seven days and on the seventh day they were to shout they were to shout and the walls of Jericho will come down so that was the battle plan that was the battle plan that was given to Joshua what, 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 what seems wrong with this battle plan what seems wrong with this battle plan for one God told them nothing was told to Joshua about any swords being drawn, about any any fists being thrown, about any bow about any bow and arrows being being shot, about any about any, no there was no physical altercation. Yet Joshua obeyed. This plan did not look like what many think a battle should look like. It didn't look like the battles of old when God helped them and they would fight or just any type of battle. It didn't look like it. But Joshua had the sense and Joshua had he just he had the sense to know that if God speaks something to you, you do it. Even though it didn't look like what the normal battles looked like, Joshua had the sense that he knew better than to do he knew better to do what God told him to do. We have to, when we're fighting these battles, whether they be spiritual battles, where all the battles are spiritual, all the battles are between good and evil, God and the devil. When you are fighting those battles, you look to God, you seek God's help. And when you seek God's help, if you truthfully and honestly are seeking God's help, you will open your heart to receive the plan that God has for you, whether it looks like what you think it should look like or not. You do what God tells you to do, and it shall come to pass. So Joshua, he did what God told him to do. They marched. They stretched the army around the cities, and they marched. For seven days, 
And on the seventh day, after the trumpets had been had sounded by the priests, and the, the, the Ark of the Covenant was being given, after seven days, after Joshua had followed the explicit instructions of God, when they shouted, the walls came down, and they were able to siege. The walls came down because of their shout to God, because of their shouts of praises. Now, the shouts of praises, and when you give God praises, and when you give, when you do what God tells you to do, the battles you can win. Let's think about that. Joshua had the army do exactly what God said to do. Okay. What if you and your army, you and your army of believers, what if the army of believers themselves got on one accord? We praised God. We did exactly what God told us to do. What if? What if we did that? What if we did that? Imagine the walls that will fall around us. Now, this this was the entire body of believers that did this. So, let's, I don't want to. I don't want to minimize God, and by no means am I minimizing Him. What I'm about to say. You possibly can't get all of the all of God's children, all of the body of believers, to, to think on one accord because we're worldwide. So that would be quite difficult for you to do. Okay? But it's possible. So so let's think, let's think on this scale here. Something that I know you can manage. What if you, I'm gonna give you some scenarios. What if you and your family got on one accord? And praise and did exactly what God told you to do. I'm not talking about the family. That's it. I'm talking about your extended family. The cousins, the aunts, the uncles. You got on one accord. And you did what God said to do. And you praised God in the proper way. And you did those things. Imagine the wall, the generational curses and families. The, the, the bondage that will come down. Now let's take it a step further. Now what if you moved into your church family? What if the church, I'm talking about your, your, your physical church that you go to, what if you got on one accord? What if you did? What if you followed the pastor? He's getting, he's getting the plan from God, and you followed him, and everybody came together, and you praised, you worshiped God. You did what was supposed to be done. You didn't question God's will. What if you did that? What if we did that? In your church, imagine the walls that will come down. The pastors wouldn't have to ask for an extra offer. The pastors wouldn't need to do this. There wouldn't be so much hell in the church. You, it wouldn't be this and it wouldn't be that. What if we did that? Imagine the change that could happen just in those two instances there. Imagine the impact you can have on, 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 on other families if your family did this. Imagine the impact the church could have on the community, on a city, on a region if you did what God said to do. If you followed God's plan, if it didn't seem like what God, what you thought it was, but you did what God told you to do as Joshua did. Imagine. Imagine what we can do. Joshua Joshua, he listened to God. The vision was given to him. Like I said, the vision was to march around the city. No physical altercation in those seven days that, that was spoke of. Joshua did it. The walls came crumbling down. Do what God tells you to do. When God lays things on your heart to do, you're praying and you have something in front of you and you're praying for God for guidance. You follow the guidance that God gives you. You follow his guidance. Don't, don't, don't try to change things up and say, oh, I need to shift this a little bit this way or shift this a little bit that way. It's a big rock in the road up there. So it ain't no way God, he told me to go this way, but he had to have told me to take this detour around to miss this rock. The blessing may be on the other side of the rock. He's going to give you the strength to climb. The old, it was an old song that used to be sang at First Baptist Church in York, Alabama. I used to remember the lady saying in part of the song, said, Lord, don't move my mountain. Why would you not want God to move the mountain? 
There's a song that even said you can speak and have your mountain move. But when you have a mountain move, and this is not to discredit you, I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just talking to you. If God moves the mountain, when another mountain comes, he can move. But when it's time for you to climb a mountain, you don't have the strength because you have it. Everybody wants their mountain move. How about you just say, Lord, don't move my mountain. Mm -hmm. Lord, don't move my mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. The blessing is on the other side of the mountain. Just ask God to give you the strength to climb. Have a blessed day. Follow God. In Jesus' name.